Hey, hi. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Angel, and this is the series of How I Built My Head Hut Mega Sculpture. Let me show you around here. Um, hopefully you've checked out some of the other parts of this series and gotten a better look around, and maybe I'll walk around with you in a minute. But uh, this is part 11 of the series, and instead of going over a specific part uh, or aspect of it in this in this section, I'm just going to be telling you four things that I learned that I would do differently if I were doing this dome mega sculpture head hut over again, start to finish. There were lots and lots of little things that I learned, you know, lots of big and little things I learned. I mean, I knew very little when I started it, and so I'm not going to list every single thing I learned, not at least in this video. Um, and that reminds me, I am working on a more polished series, and so I welcome your questions and comments because that will help me um, focus in on what needs to be articulated better and covered more in in a more polished series of this. But this is rough and raw, off the cuff, unedited, just me talking to you and um, sharing my experience. So back to the four things that I learned while I was building this head hut that I would do differently, I think, if I were doing it over again now. And the first one was um, insulation. I didn't really understand thermal mass and insulation. I'm gonna move downstairs here so I can show you what I'm talking about. I didn't really understand much about the difference between thermal mass and insulation. I kind of thought of earth as both, and indeed, depending on what it's compared to, earth can be an insulative thing or a mass, but it's more mass than insulation. Insulation generally is more airy and kicks, you know, so mass can store temperature, hot or cold, and then, and then insulation can keep that temperature stored in the mass. So what I have down here is a pounded tire wall, earthen wall, sunk into the ground. I dug this hole myself with 20 buckets and a shovel. It was a pretty phenomenal summer. Um, so it's a pretty big hole and it's surrounded by a two foot thick earth filled packed tire wall, which is great thermal mass, and then it's butted up against the earth herself. So um, it holds, uh, right now it's 47 degrees down here. I'll show you this little, I don't know if you can see that thermostat. It says it got down to 44.2 last night, and the high is uh, was 47.7, probably just a little while ago, and right now it's 47.5. So it maintains a pretty steady temperature, and that's it's cooler than earth temperature because there's cool air from outside. It's winter here right now, and uh, it's actually unseasonably warm, but it's still pretty cold at night, like, I don't know, in the 30s at least. In the, and uh, I guess right now it's probably in the high 40s outside, similar to the temperature down here, maybe in the 50s actually. So uh, some of the cool air is getting trapped down here. And if I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, I think I would have spent the extra time and money to put... Uh, insulation behind this tire wall. Earth ships use four inches of rigid insulation behind a thermal berm, which is actually extra earth behind a tire wall, and that really acts as a battery to help maintain steadier temperature. And once you heat it up with some body heat and or wood stove or propane or, or alcohol, ethanol, whatever you're using, then um, especially after a year or so, if you've covered the top right with plastic and insulation so that um, over about a year that temperature really stabilizes and is is a big part of what helps earth ships maintain their temperature. This sculpture is not an earth ship even though a lot of my friends like to call it an earth ship. It's earth ship inspired. I learned a ton from working with the earth ship crews on a couple of different earth ships as a kind of part-time intern and also reading all their books and looking at all their videos but I also was influenced by a couple of other uh, builders, um, oh gosh, his name escapes me, and he's dead now, but the guy that started uh, Cal Earth, I think it's called, that builds dome houses out of, well, they look like coil pots out of uh, sandbags or or um, tubes of sandbag kind of material, and also cordwood builders, and also Flying Earth with their lightweight concrete and their uh, dome building 
And so, and a couple other builders, I highly recommend you look into those if you haven't already, if you're interested in alternative construction, because especially flying concrete, that was one of my favorites. And of course, earthship.com is awesome. And um, they continue to do awesome things around the globe. And I think it's Cal Earth was the other one. And um, anyhow, there's lots of resources out there. I'm sure you know if you found me. Back to my list. Number one thing is that I would spend the extra time and money, even though it is a significant amount of time and money, for a insulation wrap with plastic around it, um, two to four inches of of dense insulation or whatever you know, whatever I could have done at the time. As it as it was, I didn't really realize how that worked until after I was already done building this tire wall, and I built. I actually dug the hole and built the tire wall inside of it, which is not how an earthship, an earthship is usually the wall is built up and the berm is brought in behind it. So it's a little easier to dig back out and, uh, and put in the insulation, which is what they do. But in my case, I had, it would have been a little diff more difficult and I decided against it. So um, what I did instead was I put about four to eight inches of scoria, which is a lightweight rock, volcanic rock um, that's abundant here and some pumice that I had left over, which is another uh, volcanic rock, but a little bit lighter, and that's the way I used a lot of pumice in the plaster and uh, infill in this structure. I learned a lot about lime and pumice. Anyway, I did put a plastic wrap and four to eight inches of that rock up on top, so it kind of acts as a little tiny ring, but, but honestly, it's probably not quite enough to make a significant measurable difference in how this operates as far as holding temperature. One of my main goals in building this structure was to experiment and explore how to uh, control temperature passively without using utilities. Another one was to inspire you to get off your duff and do what you want to do, make some, because I knew nothing. I was a single mom, self-employed, no budget, no time, and I still did this. So I don't know. Uh, if you're if you're using any of those in a, as an excuse, I have I have an illness. I had injuries. I broke things. All you know, all the, lots of things went wrong. And still, I'm um, almost done with this. I haven't completed my floor. See that's still dirt down there. But I have a plan percolating, and I think it'll be done soon. I look forward to showing you that. But any case, onward. Um, I guess a little minor thing, not something I would do different, but something I changed my mind on is these stairs. I was going to take out these big tire, pounded tires, and put in a nice store, uh, wooden staircase that took up less room and had some storage in it. But it just turned out that it was a lot of time and work, and I really wanted to finish this up so I can get onto another structure, and I decided it wasn't really um, worth the extra time and effort given what I'm going to do with the structure. So I'm not including that in something I would do different. That's just a side note of, uh, of a little... A little something I changed my mind. There were many things I changed my mind about, and that's one of the joys of building this kind of free form uh, by yourself without any deadlines. Or you know, I had some parameters, a goal of a uh, of five thousand dollars in five years for this and my food dog structure, and I think I came real close. It is actually year six and a half, and I'm not done, but I finished up the bulk of it. Um, I'm just working on some little tiny details that I've been stalled on. And the food dog is finished. So I finished that up um, in the fifth year, fifth five and a half. This one's been stalled just kind of on hold for that last little finish work. But And I think I came in a little over, maybe pushing six grand by the time I bought all my tools, my mixer and everything. So um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased all in all. And I'm looking forward to finishing it and showing you. And that reminds me of thing number two that I would do differently knowing if I knew then what I know now, and that is take better care of my mixer. Even though I really tried and I did take pretty good care of it, uh, I dropped the ball at one point and I ended up um, leaving it outside in the weather a couple of times. At one point I uh, killed the motor and I had to get a new motor, and then not long after that I left it out for a winter in a storm because I'm getting spoiled because we have really good weather here and you can get away with leaving things out. But... Um, you shouldn't. You should put your stuff away. Me, you, put your stuff away. And that's something I would t do better. I am going to do better with in the future. And if I, if I were doing this structure over again, I would take better care of that mixer because I need it coming up 
I could have used it already. That's part of part of the thing that's stalling me is I don't have a mixer anymore. It's a, it takes a lot more time and energy to hand mix things, even uh, the easy things. And I've done that with my plasters and things. I don't really need the mixer, but it would have come in handy. And coming up, I'm doing another bigger project, and I'm either going to have to do it all by hand, which will take a lot longer, or invest another three or four hundred bucks in another mixer. So I wish I would have. I wish. I wish I would have taken better care of that. And um, well, let's see. Number three thing. I'm trying to remember what it was. I thought I brought a note card out here, but of course. I've lost it. Number three thing, um, oh, I remember, was that I would have sealed up my bottles better. I would have taken a little more time to tape up. Each of these dots is two bottles, recycled bottles, cut in half, cleaned, and taped together, and then used like a brick. And on the ceiling, I put them in on the dome at an angle, which, um, as a side note, tangent is something I do not recommend. It's almost something I put on my list as something I wouldn't do again. But I actually, I spend a lot of time working out this pattern on the dome. And it really makes me happy, even though it took a ton of work. And it was it's full of lots and lots of mistakes. It's full of lots and lots of learning, too. I'm standing on the bed, and I'm going to spin you around slowly here. But um, that said, so I wouldn't necessarily, even though I would never do this again, and I would um, do it a different way, like on a flat plane, like you see on houses where they put a little, a little attic window. Instead of putting it in an angle, you put it straight up and down so the water doesn't get in there, and you could put a little eave over it. There's lots of good reasons for that, and I would, and I will be doing that in the future if I do any roof decorative work. Nonetheless, I'm really happy I didn't really understand or know that and put these in at an angle. But what I would do differently if I if I were doing it again is that I would take a lot more care to seal these up because what happened was some of them got water in them. I don't know if you can see. This is one that got water in it that didn't mold yet because I probably sealed it up good enough from outside. Some of them that got water, I actually took the time to drill into, release the water, try to clean. Quite a few of them actually got water, and I've since sealed the roof up better. But still, always water is going to try to, I'm trying to get you a picture of that. Can you see that? There's a water line right here. Um, that's water in here. It might even freeze and crack that eventually, which could become a real problem in the future. Um, and I'll have to like replace that whole bottle. Here's one that actually um, molded in there. And I think that's actually one of my, now that I think of it, that is one that the reason it's probably molded is because it's one that has a solar light on it. So it's actually not as sealed up. And so dirt got in there and that's um, the same now that I see, I think that all the ones that got breached, let's say, no, I see a couple that are, that are a little moldy that don't have a solar light, but some of the ones that got breached that had a solar light, um, have some mold in them now, some black mold. It's going to be really hard to get out without just replacing the whole bottle. And, you know, if I hadn't just pointed that out to you, and if you're just visiting for the first time, it's not something that necessarily stands out or is dangerous. It's sealed up in the bottle, but it's just something that, um, that bothers me frequently. It doesn't bother me. I don't let it bother me, but, um, it's something I would do differently knowing if I knew then what I know now about how the bottle walls work and how the glass interacts with water and putting things at an angle and all that. I would take a lot of care and use like some better paint and sealant or something with uh, especially the roof bottles, but also with all the bottles. But I had far almost none of that problem on my side walls where, um, you know, where they're at a perpendicular angle. It's just where you, if you're putting them at a at any kind of slant, which you shouldn't do. So, I mean, I don't recommend ever putting them in a slant, but um, I would recommend and I would seal them up better, take more care to really clean and seal them well before you use them because then they're going to be there for a really long time. Um, and last but not least, thing number four that I think I would do differently if, uh, if I was doing it again, knowing what I know now, latching that, is that I would take more video documentation of what I did. Of course, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I did have the capability to do video, but I just wasn't in the habit of it. And what I did was take tons of pictures, and I'm really grateful for that. And I'm getting ready to incorporate a lot of those in my more polished version that I'm going to be doing for you. Nonetheless, I would have loved to have some more video clips like time lapse, I could have just set it up and done some time lapse of me working. And even though that would have been extra work, it would have been really valuable to me in the part of the process that I'm in now, which is trying to 
document it in a way that I can share it with y'all. So that's thing number four that I wish uh, that I would do differently if I could go back, if I was going back and doing it again, knowing what I know now back then. Um, and that, let me just summarize, that was I would put insulation around my tire wall on the bottom. I would um, take better care of my mixer and make sure that I put it away properly for the winter when I wasn't using it, give it a home. I would take much more care to seal up my bottle bricks really well so that, especially if I was going to put them at any angle, although, again, I wouldn't recommend that, but if you are, even if you're not, really uh, take make sure you're sealing them up well, or I would make sure I was sealing them up well. And number four, I would document it a little better. I would do some time-lapse uh, video. I would put in a little extra time and do, you know, maybe a weekly video vlog or a uh, you know, summary of my progress, something like that. I wish I had more video from it, um, and I'm grateful that I have the pictures I do. Anyhow, that's been part 11 of the story of how I built my head hut, although this wasn't really so much the story of how I built it as uh, just some things, some side notes that I've been, um, that I've noted to myself as I've been going through this process of telling you this story. So thank you for joining me. I welcome your questions and comments. They're going to help me to develop my more polished version. And uh, yeah, I encourage you, if you have a project that you want to try, you're not even sure how to do it, do it anyway. Just start, you know, learn. The thing is, you have the internet now. You can learn anything. It's such an awesome, fabulous thing. And on that note, please feel free to ask me if you have any questions. I've been to have some projects coming up in the next year or two that I'm going to need some help on. I might take on some interns. So, um, you know, get in touch with me if you're interested in learning more about Paper Creek construction, dome construction, alternative construction, earth ships, any of it, you know, cob building, I'm into uh, tiny housing, all of that is what I'm into too. So uh, till next time, peace, progress, and possibilities.